you to join me in welcoming David, I'm not going to say any last name, Patty, <laughs> and Santi, and uh, the most intelligent person in Basel, Baharat. Thank you so much. <laughs> Hello, I'm um, happy to um, to be the host today, and I'm happy that so many uh, people are gathering here together. I invite you to, to to join us here at the table and to um, to participate in our discussion in our talk. Um, I'm very happy to meet um, my guests. Um, which I already had the, um, the opportunity to talk to. They all have um, a very, um, let's say, a high, um, I think they have high values in, 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 uh, when it's about society and community. And what they have is, is um, strength, patience, and, um, and uh, ideas. And um, I want to start in the beginning um, uh, with Art Basel, because we're here in the context of art. And, uh, and there was a curator, or there is a curator, um, Nicolas Bobillat. Uh, he's in the end of the 90s, he um, created the, the word relational aesthetics, uh, which meant that actually art is um, not the product in the end, it's more the process, it's the gathering, it's the talk, it's the people coming together. So the artist is the one who is producing the opportunity of people coming together and producing community or talking. It's like always different, but in that case I would say we go in this direction. It's, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a roof, it's a house, it's a place uh, which was built by a community, with by people who had a good time together, who were learning from each other, and um, and they like um, offered us now the place to have a conversation. Um, to take this as a segue to to, to the main topic, um, I would ask Santi first, maybe because usually your work starts with a with a need. And uh, then with this need, um, which is a bit different than here, with this need, um, you start to react and to find ways um, how to um, solve these things. Um, can you please uh, talk about your practice? Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, uh, yes, uh, many people say that uh, uh, what I would do is here in Albaso, <coughs> because no needs in Albaso. <laughs> no needs in that uh, rich country, or, or perhaps yes. At the end, uh, we normally work with, uh, with uh, any, when we are a collective or a student, mother, families, uh, people who work with mental disabilities, and many people who try to to make a project, and they were waiting or trying to convince politicians in Spain and other countries. But at the end, it, it, it never happened. You know? So they normally ask us if we have protocol, we have the energy, we have material, we have the people to make a real project. No? So we normally work with the public, you know, with a public, in, a, a private institution like Arbasi. At the end, the experience here, you say, it's you know, at the end, for me, the only important was to, to work here, and with my team, of course, and, and with the volunteers or people who wanted to come here to, to work during three weeks, to, to spend good time, to, and we spend our time trying to understand that city. And it's one excuse, that architecture, it's one excuse. So when you finish, it's only for one week. So it's a stupid, could be a stupid, no? Could be. Could be, it should be, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very young <alien> sometimes. <laughs> so, but at the end, <clears throat> you know, we try to meet with different groups and association here that wanted to collaborate with us and then they could have the right to use that material for another project in the city. But it was impossible. Really, so I don't know because many many groups they they, they have any time to came. They respect the project. Many of them they don't respect Arbasel. So it was a very strange uh, relation. 
So at the end, all the material will disappear in another social project, but not here in Basel. So it's okay for me. Uh, but I say, here for me was a surprise that many different groups that they make alternative architecture, like many people ask, uh, but all of them are working for the private. And in our country, in our day-by-day -day practice, we are trying to, to involve the public. Because the, at the end, they have all the rules, they have the, the, the public money that we pay each day with our job. So it, here it was a very strange experience because all people work with the private companies, with the pu private, uh, and I don't know, I am sure that there are many people that are working with the public to make a better relation, to use the law, to use the public materials, money, empty sites, empty buildings, and all of them. But I, I haven't so much time, I don't meet. So you can see that our practice is normal. It's normal. We have here two friends and more from there that at the end we meet many times to work in that direction. No? In Barcelona, in Madrid, Sevilla, in Basque Country, and different uh, places. No? So at the end, uh, yes, for me it was a surprise that Alvira invited me. But uh, don't think about the project that like, like a need is like a, one experience. We normally work because at the end we never are the, the final user of the building we made. So but during two years, one year, three years, we are working and living in, in that process. When we finish the project, we disappear. So for us, it's more important experience to meet 100 people, 200 people, and to talk about all oh, life, politics, and to try to understand that city. And now I have my very clear idea to, about that city and that, that meeting. Please. So um, it's always also a matter of context, of culture, like what you're saying, is, is that, that you cannot just put your practice in another place and do the same thing. It needs like different tools in in another context, and also because of the different needs. It you of to work in, in Medellin or in Mexico or in, in Spain too are totally different relation. No, for me the problem is for the rich countries. It's my opinion. I'm eh? sorry, <laughs> <laughs> but it's that, that uh, the people sometimes trust in the, the government. It's very rich government. They have very good uh, laws. And you have all the ser uh, social service uh, full, and it's okay. But the end, the citizen uh, work, have a, a free time later. But I don't see at the end to work in, in the commons. No, in, in Spain we day by day, and in Latin America more. No, because at the end our government is a disaster. You know, so many different needs. So we have a law about healthy, but many people are asking and trying to make another new type of uh, mental uh, healthy. No. So day by day, we, we must to go to be prepared to make, and in that case, we, we made a, a, a network around Spain and Europe to have more power to discuss or demand against the city, our cities in Sevilla. I, I haven't any relation with my politicians. It's impossible. So here, I only check that all is um, it's quiet, it's beautiful, and you have so much money. Uh, it's my opinion. <coughs> <laughs> go, go ahead if you have a it's, question. Um, it's, I come from here, I'm from Basel. And it's a pity that um, we are a rich city, yes, but we have a lot of people, they are poor. And there is a place at the Rhine, at the half, what has the, um, harbor. harbor. There is an occupied place and they built houses there and have uh, also this. And they could use this. But it, it, uh, the art is for them, it's only for the rich. There's no contact. It's no contact with, with the, they hate this. So it's a pity that there's no connection with this. That's um. uh, okay, uh, we were there <laughs> two times, of course, we were there. We connected with them. Yes, it's a public, it's, it's a public land. It's a public, they have a public contract, no, it's, it's squatting. They are, so it's a public, so they have a contract. They are living in, in a way illegality. It's nice for me. We were there. Uh, it's nice to use the public for me, for myself. It's very correct. So at the end, uh, not for themselves, of course. So we meet, and they say, no, no. It's I respect your war. I respect. I don't want to go there to collaborate with your process. 
but we need the material. I say, if you hate our Basel, don't, please, don't say me, I need the material, but I want to collaborate with you. So we say, no, I know. We were, during six months, coming here to meet with different institutions, foundation. For me, it's a surprise, sorry, but to meet with politicians that collaborate with our Basel too to meet with the, the, the foundation of culture foundation that they are promoting housing. It's very strange for me, sorry, to say and I'm squatting when we have a contract with the, with the city. So sorry, and this time, okay? <laughs> okay. Uh, and creative time for their vision to bring people like Davi and Santi, and I'll put myself in this group also, to such a space to, you know, across disciplines and across geographic context and across economic, social context. So when I was uh, challenged to come and speak to, to everyone and to interact with, with um, Davi and Santi, I was thinking, what is this meaning of public space uh, when in our context uh, space is very contested because the majority of the population does not have access to space. And so, so is public space an enabler uh, of justice, uh, social justice, or is it a consequence of social justice where you could, you know, have a, a common playing field in which everyone can enjoy and take advantage of public space? And knowing how politically engaged the work of David and Santi is and, and, and the kind of uh, uh, discourse that we're involved in in Cabo Verde also, um, it's very politically charged. So when you come to this uh, context of Basel where uh, the, the majority of population's needs are met, and then you could kind of begin to think of what does the meaning of public space is. Um, I come from a context where the majority of the people don't have their basic needs met. So, so this kind of um, uh, discourse and practice is one of activism, you know, and until we have a more just and, and symmetrical societies or spaces, these discussions are very necessary. And I admire profoundly the work of Santi and, and, and David and others in Arquiteturas Colectivas because um, it, it, uh, they're very disruptive practices in architecture. We have to recognize that. I don't know how many architects are in this group, but you know, um, when, you, when you try to, um, ha when you try to work within your context and you're aware of the injustices of space and the role of space, it's, it's very hard to create a practice, you know? And they've managed to work for so long in this, in this, um, in this way, right? So what I do in Cabo Verde, let me bring Cabo Verde in because that's a contribution I can bring to you, um, is how do we create a practice, an architectural practice of consequence? And this is a term that I borrow from friends in South Africa who have a practice there. So your practice has consequence. Or, and it's very hard to do that. It's not an easy thing. And I've been back home for 10 years, and I'm still trying to fashion a, a, a practice that is diversified, that has consequence. And this means working with the people, you know, and, and always uh, working towards some kind of justice. Uh, and that's, that's, that can happen in a ver various spaces, being academic, uh, being everyday practices, and recognizing the efforts of the majority of the people. So um, I don't know if I'm answering a question of context, but it, it's very important to, to define, I was, define what it is that is public about space. You know, and until everyone has access, equal access to space, then we're still are not there in the, converse, in the common conversation, be in Basel or Medellin or Madrid. Um, oh, can I tease you? Yeah. Hello? OK. Um, so when you're doing these analyses, do you also like produce tools? Like, uh, well, my work in Cabo Verde first started in academia and where, you know, we, we also, when we talk about our context and where our spaces were so politicized, they were occupied, we're post-colonial societies, uh, where space and power are very much linked to each other. And when you have an, when I was at the university, it was a matter of also thinking 
about the consequences of our history and also thinking of how we how can we create other paradigms for ourselves mm -hmm. you know and uh, how do we actually practice an architecture or an architecture way of thinking in these contexts so it was very important to us to begin to to question issues of formality and formality for example in Cabo Verde where the mm -hmm. 80% of the population self-constructs, right, in so-called illegal ways, uh, but they have such a, an amazing sense of um, of what space uh, means to them and what, why they need it and why, what they need it for, right? So it's the right to the city, the right to claim space, and the right to, to proper housing, a roof over your head. And they're the ones who are building the city when you think of 80%, 70%, or even 60% of the population is, is uh, building their own uh, space of living, uh, it, it's pretty significant. So how do you speak about this terminology of formal, informal, legal, illegal in those contexts? So that was the work that started. Now, uh, I have a project called, it's called Storia no Lugar, which is stories uh, about people and places. And what it is, is recognizing the agency of the population to actually craft and claim space. Um, so in some ways, uh, it's recognizing, initially just recognizing their work, learning from it, how it's very interesting how you claim space and then you start building on it and how that process is, is disruptive, is, is what Santiago mentioned about, uh, you know, playing a little bit with illegality, legality. So I don't know if I've answered, but I'll pass. Um, well, um, I, I'm lucky I know your work in Cabo <laughs> Verde, and it's, I, uh, for me it was surprising that it's not really distant of what we have to do in Spain or when we're working in Latin America. I mean, I think that it's, it's something funny that we're speaking about a global conflict in a very quiet place. <laughs> because the, the I think the conflict is, is quite more or less the same everywhere with different you know bodies or manifestations but it's 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 a question of who really has the right to imagine to build and also to manage the city and it's what you says just said about Cabo Verde is more or less what we have in Barcelona with the people being evicted and displaced because of the speculation forces or the mass tourism industry just as you have different ways but more or less the same story mm -hmm. or in Seville or any I mean Mexico whatever and I think that um, what we're bringing here is quite alike and it's not uh, by chance that we are already connected uh, and we've been working with many different profiles many different agents from activists to scholars to uh, researchers from all kinds, a lot of independent agents operating in a connected way, m more and more connected, building tools together also. And, um, and now, I mean, the, the question of, uh, of how to deal with the public is something that has been emerging from, in our case, from really tiny autonomous projects acknowledging that they were somehow producing something which is com commons, and how these commons, little by little, become the new public space, which is not the traditional public space decided and managed by the power. It's another kind of public space. So it's, a, it's like a permanent struggle, and I think that's more or less where we are. And there's, I mean, the, 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 the role of creativity of, of, the, of the ability of imagining together is very important. I mean, it's not by chance that in our first meetings there were a lot of artists and people who, become, who came, I mean, in a critical way, came from the artistic uh, atmosphere, no? Um, net, network is something like the heart of the whole thing, which gives you also power and, and helps other to empower um, themselves. Um, can you can you um, talk a bit more about this network, also about this open source um, knowledge um, idea that you also mentioned yesterday, and um, maybe also about the coda and the hacking? It would be interesting. Well, uh, 
well, yesterday we we were reminding, remembering how Santi and me we started to collaborate, and it was like uh, we we uh, it was we met at the beginning of the 2000s on the first moment, like seeing that it was there was a lot of similarities between what they were doing in Seville, what we were doing in Barcelona. Uh, and there, uh, we also knew that there were other people doing interesting things and the other people doing things that had the potential to be complementary. So this idea of networking, I think it was in his mind and in our minds. And also then um, in 2007, Santi took an opportunity of, of recovering a lot of material, house containers, uh, from a settlement in Zaragoza and uh, did a call and we somehow attended the call and said, okay, this is an opportunity to not only to build a lot of things, I mean, uh, something which were in, in all the territory because there was a, a, like the possibility to, to help a lot of different small projects, but each of them was a case study, something that could be replicated. So. I think we were very much in the beginning, in the symphony, in the in the idea that th we could could build up some, something like a permanent network that could empower us to be something more than we were at home uh, in our own practices, and also to build some some code, some tools, some new ways to do things and share it, and also to to be able to fail and to recover from failing, and also to, to permanently uh, learn from each other and, and from others. And that's the idea, we've been doing that, I mean, since that time. And last year we met Patty and Cesar in our meeting and it was really a privilege to have someone who was coming from another really different country to bring their experience, and that was the, precisely the idea. And, and to acknowledge that it's not so different what they're doing that we were doing. So this question of the code of the, uh, or, or the, I mean, we, we like it to, to say that what we need somehow is an open source city. Because we have this idea that just as happens in, in IT technologies, you have like proprietary sources, proprietary codes that belongs to, to big companies and the, the private in general. And on the other side, you have all this body of culture that brings up from, from, I mean, from many different places in an horizontal way. And what happens is that we knew that in terms of technology, this is a success. Because they don't tell you, but Google inside they use Linux. <laughs> the Deutsche Bank used Linux, NASA used Linux. But they, 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 for, to the exterior, they say, okay, we're using Microsoft and Apple. So you buy the shit, <laughs> we use the good thing. Uh, so the, the idea is to, to, to turn it all over, I mean, to, 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 give, to have, look at the city, look at our environments, and, and introduce this idea of sharing the code. So we are empowering in a well that has no possibility to be reversed. I mean, I guess that we've been moving slowly. We are, we're weak, we're not like really powerful, but the little by little, the things we've done in a networked way are not reversible, somehow. Um, I'm, I, I was really um, interested, I, maybe also like the audience is interested in the case study of this Toyo Ito uh, project and the, the hacking. <laughs> Would you, I mean, this is interesting, like, to, to, to really see these things in a, in a, in a case, no? Um, would you maybe... Yes, I'll try to be short. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a public, about public space. And what happened in Barcelona is that uh, Toyo Ito Associates were uh, commissioned to do a huge thing that comprises uh, hotels, um, offices, but also the new fair of Barcelona, just things like this, but... I mean, huge, and also the public space around it. But it, it, it happens that this is not in the middle of nowhere. This is in a specific neighborhood, an Asian neighborhood with real neighbors. And the neighbors were pissed off with Toyo Ito <laughs> because, I mean, the, the buildings are really nice. The design of the public space in terms of design is not bad, but in the terms of usability, of the possibility of the neighbors to appropriate the space is zero. I mean, 
we always say that this was a very good Japanese architect with no friends in the neighborhood. <laughs> so the municipality called us because the neighbors were asking the municipality, can we improve something or can we do something with that? So we were there and they said, okay, maybe do some small interventions. And that's one of the problems of this alternative architecture. They're always expecting you to, to get some pallets and some wood and do some uh, furniture and that's it, no? But the neighbors wanted more, we wanted more. So finally we ended up uh, with a million euro budget to transform uh, quite a big part of this public space, but the Toyoito Associates uh, group, and now we're doing it. The question is that Toyoito doesn't know about it. <laughs> now, now he knows. <laughs> but what you're doing actually is, is you're changing the DNA of the whole thing. You, you produce mistakes in a way that something actually like tension is happening, like a livable place is happening. You, you're like kind of destroying the, the, the perfect structure like for, for good, like for a good reason. Is, is it like... Well, I think that the idea is that to, to, to give a message that it can be done. This can be done, but it, it has been doing... I mean, Recetas Urbanas have been doing this for years in a very strategic places with amazing results. So the question is that this is like a, is this like a virus. I mean, and then it's, re it's really about to change the DNA, yeah. I guess. And I, I was telling you yesterday that we have these fellows who are scholars on economics and uh, political science, and they are, not only them, but specifically these guys, for example, in Barcelona, La Hydra Cooperativa, they're proposing how to change the laws, and even us, we're proposing some modification of the law, or how to use the existing law in a proper way to do what has to be done somehow. No, no, when, no, because when you say good reason, we don't want to, to make a project for good reason. No. Yes, I know. Yes, because at the end, the problem is to look for the, 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 the values. So when, when we go, when many groups go to the urban planning office in Sevilla, Madrid, and say, Ay, we need a park for the children because it's good for the children. No, no, I, we know that, that the trees and the garden is good for the children. You know, because we were speaking about that question. Yeah. When you go to, to talk with the city, with the government, with the regional government, with the state, you go to say, no, no, we are using the law you we have. So we are using the participation law that we have here. We are using the equality law. We are using the, the, all the laws from Europe, from Spain, from Sevilla. No, because at the end, they are technicians. They say sometimes, no, you don't know. You're having an idea. Don't worry. It's impossible to make it. Sorry, go, go. So people at the end, for me, the most important from that network is because at the end, many different groups around Spain or Argentine or Mexico say how to connect with the politician, how to demand that we have the reason, how to say, no, we are making now. You, we, we, sometimes we are illegal not because we want to be illegal, because when you have a group of students, of, of families that they need tomorrow, not two years before, after. So uh, you can wait. So we have a, a, a beautiful project in Madrid that now is still illegal. Two floors in a public a school. Because at the end we started because the people decide to make it in that moment. Because the energy, the social energy, it was them. If you ask for, at the end it's illegal, but at the end could be illegal, but could be correct. But you must to show the values. If 400 people are working at the same time to build together a public school, it's correct, it's good. We are uh, showing that we are using the law, but not the, the period of time that the administration needs to make legal. So, so for me, the most important, because now we were talking about that Madrid and Barcelona, they have a politician from the left and they appear more open and more uh, close for our opinion, our way to work. But if it change in, in one year, what's happened? No works? So at the end, I don't want that the, 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 the right or the left say yes or no. I only want to say our practice have all that values. And when we go, the, the, the best for the network is because if we need lawyer, we have it, so we are involved. If we need artists, designer, uh, uh, activists, or hackers are full. We don't know all people from the network because appear and disappear. But the end is the only way because one government have lawyers, economists, 
a designer, they have all. The only way to, to have a good or bad relation with them is to have the same team. The same team. You have lawyer because many families go there and say no because the lawyers say that it's impossible. Fuck them. So to be lawyer isn't to be correct. So, no, it, so when they say, no, no, we are a urbanist. She is architect. She is activist. So what do you want? So at the end, day by day, we, we must to be more intelligent very fast because the problem is that the same structure we are attacking or we are trying to, to be friend, uh, at the end, they are very fast. I say always that a Monday morning, a banker, a Monday morning at night, awake and start to fuck you. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck <laughs> ne, not, not dupes. No, 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 no. But we must to meet on Monday morning to try to have a relation, to talk, and on, on Tuesday, you are totally died. So the, the speed of work is dif different. So we, we need to be more f faster and old. So it's a way. Sorry. <laughs> I wish I could say fuck as often as, as, as Santi, but no, it is, it is, <laughs> that's great, it's great. No, but it, it, it is interesting. When a community wants something, they have the, the, they have the vision, they know what they want, and they know how to do it. And it's just that we are not taking, or the politicians are not taking that into consideration. So it's very interesting in Cabo Verde how people appropriate land and occupy it and use it and organize themselves. Uh, uh, to One, they take land, they claim land, and it's like a kind of a social thing. I need this much space, and I'll take it, and then I'll start building, and it's a progressive um, process, you know, uh, and they know what they want, they know what they need. It's not somebody in the municipality sitting in their desk who's going to design a park for the children. They know, they know that over here, they, uh, their community, they, they help each other the way they're organized. And they, even the way they build is a process that we call in Cabo Verde, juntamon, to bring your hands together. So it's the person who does a little bit of uh, electrical work and the, and the other one who's a, uh, who does um, cement and the other one who's a carpenter or has some skills. And they know how to fashion their own solutions. And there's so much to learn there in terms of the circular economy and, and the strategies that they use and the planning. Uh, of course, they're, the, they lack infrastructure and they still lack a lot of um, conditions. Uh, but it's, it's, it's recognizing that there's these dynamics that exist in the community and that people have the capacity to choose for themselves and, 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 and define what they need. Uh, and in some ways it's very interesting what we don't have in Cabo Verde that Santi and David have is this, is this uh, you know, multidisciplinary force to face uh, off the government and to face off the, the political uh, powers that be, you know with also the same language. So it's a little bit of guerrilla tactics so that we're still in it, but you know, we're, it's, it's, a, it's a war. It's a war for the rights and for justice. Um, can I ask you three to, you all have a, like a very special way to define a resource um, and um, also sustainability. Like what is, what, like in all these projects, what are the resources you work with? <laughs> okay, <laughs> again, this happens often. I mean, it's not the first time, and it's not the last time it happens. <laughs> okay, um, well, um, where it's like where when you think that you operate from scarcity, when you operate from the nearly nearly the impossibility to do things, you have to be very imaginative about what resources you have. I mean, on one side, there's an evident resource which is needed, and it's like human energy and will to do things. On the other side, it's like these skills around, like from special profiles that could help. On the other side, that's the, the material resources, for example, uh, usually lacking a, a monetary budget, but you may have like material that would come from here or from other situations. 
uh, one of the things that I like about this network idea is that in a network, I mean, there's a kind of a mystery of how networks are, have a potential. There's a book called The Richness of Networks, I think, by John Kai Blinkler or something like that. <laughs> the names again. But uh, this is the, it's this mystery of, of how things are optimized in a networked environment. And, and it's like uh, with the time you understand that, for example, in a networked environment, there's difficulty that there's waste. It's like in nature. I mean, there's no waste. There are like left resources that anyone could use. And on the other side, it's like a, a permanent situation of open knowledge that somehow is like a, this idea again of the open source or the, of the open intellectual property thing that if, if you produce some result or some code or some how-tos, anyone can use them appropriate them, correct them, transform them, and so on. So it's like a, to, to face a paradigm of proprietary resources with a paradigm of open resources that can be, I mean, more. it's, it's again this idea of going from autonomy to commons and from commons to public, reinventing the public, and going more like into specific examples Together with Santi and also with other collectives from the network, uh, we have been building an, a tool which is called GRRR, grr, uh, dot, dot tools, GRRR dot tools, which is uh, just it's a simple, which is a, a way, uh, a place to exchange these resources. But uh, as there are other mm, sites, for example, on the internet that you can exchange resources, I mean, this one we made is different because our main goal is not to be ecology. ecology. I mean, of course, we, 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 we value the fact that it's this, this is good for nature or for the planet. But the thing is that re these materials are ways to catalyze situations and to make people who are starting, let, make them see that it's possible to do things and and to get together and connect it with other people that may help you somehow. May I ask it out? <laughs> can, you, can, can you maybe tell a tell like, like really like a case study from mm -hmm. this? Yes. Yes, like we have people who do yes of, of course, yes. Because sometimes, uh, because we were working during 22 years, I don't know, but uh, sometimes we are more professional. <laughs> and yes, I'm more elegant too. And sometimes, no, we are checking, we are studying. Well, I, I can say Alice is there. She's the real boss from our team. Hola. <laughs> and my daughter is there too. <laughs> so well, it's nice because we are very professional in the way to, to, to look for the values. So sometimes when, when a group, a, a case in, in, in Sevilla, in Dos Hermanas, we made a project because um, many different uh, families they, they have a need, a real need, and they were waiting seven years, having a meeting with the politicians, and they say, no, we are in crisis, we are having any money, sorry. It's, at the end, they ask us and other teams to say, it's possible to invent another solution. So our solution for, was to, okay, we need a list of people that they want to collaborate with us. And then when you have a list of uh, 85 persons, 100 person who sign, uh, they will work with us during two weeks or similar. You have at the end money. So you say 100 people, 45 hours each one during six months, you have money. When you have material, sometimes we bring the material. Another time we know that that city have material, public material in the storages. So you say we have the people, it's money, it's 100,000 money. And you have material and we have material. So. The last, it's happened that the project cost for the, the, the government nearly half million. But at the end, with our protocol, with the people, with the material, with the, it cost only 100,045. So it was stupid, the third part. So you are showing that it's possible if you made that type of protocol, you can build, and it's a real building, so not temporary. For me, at the end, it's like a holiday in what way? We, we haven't any permit here. I, I, I don't give a, a calculation. It's here. Don't, don't, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid, okay? 
I'm now artist, so in that moment I'm artist, so it's okay. It's no paper, <laughs> well, no, paper, sí, pero no muy sencillo. <laughs> so, no, I only want to say one thing more. In the different, at the end it's very hard, because now it's, to, it's a holiday to be here, but day by day isn't uh, as funny as up here. So we, are, we, we, try, we, we make small projects to have the energy to, to wait for the longer project, because we are working with the mental health field and the four year, uh, it's impossible. If you demand a license to build with mental disability, the city say, no, you are crazy. How you want to build with that people? They are crazy too. Um, Patty, you, you have to face um, other problems in your, in your projects. Can you maybe? Uh, sure, I mean, there, there, there's a lot of similarities, as, as David had mentioned, but there's a lot of differences also. I mean, uh, Spain is different than Cabo Verde. I mean, we... <laughs> So, so no, I, I'm so I'm just saying in terms of the the resources and where you go to tap into, into these uh, holes in the system to get what you need and to turn that into uh, an action, right? I mean, we're still battling uh, with having the government um, acknowledge, you know, uh, certain certain dynamics that they're a part of. So in terms of resources, and also we haven't gotten to the point where our intervention is still kind of one of awareness. Uh, we, we are now working with a community uh, that involves actually building, building and constructing things. But before that, it was a matter of how to create spaces uh, where the people can uh, represent themselves, uh, where they can... Um, begin to change the way that the city looks at these processes. So our platform, or initially, is a, is a digital platform of storytelling and, and to understand these processes, to expose them, and to begin to change um, the way that uh, the, we see our own, our own cities. Uh, so, but, but it's interesting because it's in the it's life stories and it's in each individual case story that we deal with it's a person it's a life and it's the way they manage uh, their day-to-day -day, you know and how they are able to themselves um, harness the support of the community within the community um, and, and, and even in terms of resources material resources how it's so incremental sometimes in a such a long time frame, we're talking about years between the time that they, they buy their first building block to the time that they actually have a roof over their heads. So it's not as much as how we work with get garner, gathering resources, but how we uh, understand how people are doing it on their daily, daily uh, lives. And what does this teach us about, uh, teach us as an architect, as a uh, somebody who's thinking of ways to intervene in these spaces, how it teaches us how to take that into consideration, this time, resources, networking within the community, strategies. So it's, it's, it's a little bit uh, different, but it's the same principles. Can I say something? Although the difference between Cabo Verde and Spain, there are like some similarities also in the fact that, for example, Santi also, or Retitas Urbanas with Todo por la Praxis, they've been working in Cañada Real, which is an absolutely legal settlement in the capital, in Madrid. It's more than 40,000 people living there with no legal rights. And, and, and no one was working there as technicians, as, as professionals, but them, I mean, working also starting like you, like making visible what were the inhabitants, the dynamics, their relations, and then like starting from inside, and finally present kind of a, a plan for the place, mm -hmm. which, I mean, yeah. so, I mean, I, I, of course it's different. I mean, of course it's different, but the, the question is that reality is really diverse also. And, well, I don't know. Yeah, we're just at different phases. You guys have uh, 20 years on top of this. <laughs> you know. No, it's, it's interesting. I mean, I could relate completely. It, it, 
It's just that we're at an earlier phase and, and, and it's very exciting to know that these things are possible and these practices are possible. And, and I remember when I went to Arquitecturas Colectivas, I was so impressed and I, I kept asking everyone, how do, you, how do you have a practice? How do you, how do you live? <laughs> you know? How do you make this into your practice? And, and, you know, and it's not volunteer work, it's really your work. And it's a very different, it, and we have to recognize that. I mean, when we talk about activism in, in, this, in this field, and I consider uh, this uh, some sort of activism, we're trying to change fundamentally the way things are socially. Um, but then is how do you sustain, you know, the sustainability is also for us as practitioner. How do we sustain this practice? How do we live and also kind of intervene? And I kept asking, but how, how do you, how do you, how do you make your, how do you pay the bills of the office over your, over your house? And how do you make this into a, a, a practice, you know, and not, and not just, uh, you know, it's not a, it's no volunteer. It's not, it's not this kind of, um, uh, how do you say it in English, uh, charity work. It's, it's not, it's not, it's not, an, it's not an NGO. NGO. It's not charity. So it's also about finding that balance. How do you create a practice that is consequential, but that you also, you know, are 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 contributing to your, you know, stability and to to this kind of uh, social justice. So it, this it, is where creativity comes. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of creativity, <laughs> a lot of creativity. So it's very interesting, it's very exciting to see that Recetas Urbanas and Straddle 3 and all the other ones, that they are making it and they are mining and they are changing the DNA and they are, um, and they are sustainable. You know, in some ways they're sustainable. So I'll answer that from the other point, not how you how you, how you work towards sustainability in communities, in the world, and everything, which is, all, but how do you sustain your own practice mm -hmm. in this, when you have these values and you have these kind of interests? You know, so, so I'll just flip it around mm -hmm. uh, and say that it, it, it's hard work and it's not easy to, to fashion in how you, you work. Thank you. Um, I would like to invite uh, our other guests. <laughs> Um, if anybody has a question, please. Uh, <laughs> yeah, my, my question is very simple. Not for you. Yeah. I, I think it's for everybody. Um, because well, we, you've been talking a lot of Cabo Verde about Spain, where I am from too. Uh, but I live here, so I can compare. So my question is, how do you feel doing something here now? on the Art Basel. I mean, this has nothing to do with all you have uh, told us until now. So... <laughs> I think the question is for Santi. <laughs> no, I think the question is Elvira who invited me. <laughs> well... That, that, that is clearly what we call in Spain a hot potato, una patata caliente. Uh, no, I, I would like to say that um, I don't know if I can respond to the question of how he feels or you feel. I can tell you how I feel, right? And, and I, I can tell you how I feel both as a curator that has been engaging with these practices for so long, as a citizen that wants to be connected and engaged with these experiences, but also as a, yeah, as a human being that, as you were saying before, Santi, wants to live in a different world in which we can connect with strangers, right? Um, Isabel Lewis, in her first uh, workshop, when we were here uh, with just materials around and surrounded by offenses, how you, how, what is what I, we like in cities and what we fear? And what I like in cities... And, and I'm not saying that this is something that I have found here tremendously, but this is what I sometimes I'm looking for, is the warmth of a stranger, right? Can we connect who, with who we are, with what we constitute as human beings when we are in places where we don't know anybody? And my fear is that that connection that is so organic, that is so natural, could, be, could get lost at some point. So the reason why we're doing this, not necessarily here, uh, but in any place as a curator is to create a sense of awareness of the need of those practices, of how those practices bring connectiveness, bring togetherness, bring ways of doing, and as they have been saying for, 
for this last hour, and a, a possibility to think in tools that we can all manage. Uh, something that Santi says in a recent interview, right? Um, about talking about spaces in the world where the government don't have every single tool. And this is a hyper-regulated society here where we are, right? And the fact that we could bring something that somehow could escape their control is the reason why I invited not only Santi, but also Isabel and Lara, right? The feeling that this could be, you know, the gravel here, so in a sense, could be threatening to the somehow festivity and sort of quietness of the space was one of the reasons. Having like all these guys walking slowly, all this drumming, changing the, the way they compose is one of the reasons. But mainly, and, and you know, Santi, you were the first people I have in mind when they invite us to, to intervene in this space, which is, in a way, the leftovers of a recent architecture. This, is what, this plaza was never thought about something that the plaza can offer you. There is nothing about cultural identity, warm, there are no benches, no trees. This is an emptiness. This is not a space you know, that was considered to live as such, right? And, and to me, bringing Reseta Urbana's methodology to a space like this was the opportunity to bring some of that warmth to this space. That's the reason why I invite you here. But also to make aware people that this are working in this way is also a practice that needs to be supported. Yep. So you get your fee. Yeah. <laughs> you, <laughs> yes, that's also true. More, you, I have a and you have a structure you can take somewhere else in the world to produce good and, and permanent support people in, in needs where, where it's needed. But you also, and for me, that was, has been really, really special that you have brought people to work with you that are new architects that are also trying to engage with this kind of architecture that perhaps architects and engineers uh, that are absolutely capable to run this on their own. You have proved that this is a know-how, that this is an urban recipe that anyone can follow if they want. So these are, this is how I feel. <laughs> I think it's perfect. Uh, yeah. Me too, me too, me too. <laughs> Absolutely, I agree with you. <laughs> okay, exactly, I want to, to say. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, absolutely. Okay, yeah, I wanted to say something also very related to Enrique's comment uh, about auto-construction, you say, or self-construction. I've been looking at it in uh, other uh, wealthy countries, not Switzerland, but other uh, rather wealthy countries. And uh, what I observe is... Uh, Auto-construction is not so related with uh, the wealth or the needs or the utility, but with leisure, which I know is something you are going to hate if I say, but it's not that hard leisure. How I understand a rich city is mainly, let's say, simplifying cities are built by architects, so that will the inhabitants work during the week, and on the weekend we go shopping, and if we are fun, we go partying. If we are sophisticated, we go to a concert or an art exhibition. And there are some few people in the city that don't accept this state of things, and they don't accept to go just uh, shopping on weekend or watching TV, but, but they want to take the space on their hands. And this is not something because of need. It is a need. It is a need because they don't accept the city built by the architects and politicians and developers. They take the control of the city. And it is a leisure activity because they do it on weekends because they want freely. And then maybe they build something like a shed in the garden or they grow up salads. A lot of people are busy now growing the best salad in the world, the most biological, time-demanding salad. And, you know, and it's not something done because you are hungry. You do it because the process of doing the salad is nourishing yourself. So it's a work which is just basically, and that sounds Marxist, it's just not alienating. It's just the time you really waste, because I'm talking about wasting time, which is something extremely luxurious, and I'm talking about extremely wealthy countries like Switzerland. You waste hours and hours in a salad because this work you invest is nourishing, it's, and I think that's activism as well, taking the space in your hands when you don't have to, because you want. And I think in this context, uh, the whole discussion on, on uh, auto-construction of Santi is really very meaningful and has nothing to do with whether Basel is wealthier than Paris or Zurich or the neighborhood. It's, it's more about taking control of your space, basically. And I think this is interesting in Madrid, in Rotterdam, 
in Zurich and in Basel, uh, for sure. So I don't know what you think about that, connecting you with leisure time, but that's how I see it here. <laughs> I'm just provoking a bit. <laughs> Hey to hi everyone, I'm an uh, architect from, come from Turkey and try to not to build a building. This is very hard because nowadays our uh, fake economy running with this construction, uh, constructing way and it's almost, it's almost to die. It's already died but nobody is not saying loudly. Uh, and we are the one who started, I'm always thinking this autonomous uh, architectural things related with the economy, lack of the materials, lack of the things. It started with maybe, but nowadays, yes, it's teaching us how to uh, make our things in the public spaces. And then before the, the economy failed in Istanbul, we way of the learning from these copyleft and openly uh, open information these guys put in the internet and um, it's working and I know th this is not about the economy, it's not about the chaos, it's not about the city's style. Everybody needs to learn something uh, to way of making autonomous things to uh, express themselves understand their needs because the power always can sh uh, build the environment from the upper level the from the big scale and uh, if even if it's things that think about the small scale couldn't uh, touch the uh, these small scale uh, organism can touch the small scale this is the thing i thank I've. thank you very much for these last words i want to I, I, first of all, I want to thank everybody to come here. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for this enlightenment, <laughs> like, and teaching and learning. Um, thank you very much. I will pass the mic over to Well, first and foremost, um, thank you everyone and applause. Um, I just want to say because our space is full of activations, we need to give the mic to Isabel Lewis to start to sonically activate in the space. But we could continue sit, sitting down here and talking more informally, as I, I don't want you to go anywhere if you want to stay. And, and please join us also later at 3. Santi's going to be around, and if you want, we can have a conversation. And um, we can continue here, as I said. And tomorrow we will have La, uh, Lara Almarsegui introducing on wasteland and mineral rights. So I'm going to give the mic to uh, Isabel. Thank you once again. We, there's still beer, there's still cake, which is delicious. Just stay, stick around, uh, and we can continue the conversation informally. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all.